Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike. I am the American Analyst, and tonight we're going to be going over a New York Times article, Is America Overreacting to the Coronavirus? We're going to talk about it, and I'm going to give you what my particular thoughts are. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and follow me on Twitter and Minds. Let's get into it. All right, so jumping right into this one, I wanted to talk about the current state of the coronavirus, things, how things are developing, and what I believe uh, is going to be happening in the future. Firstly, I don't like to say that I told you so, but I told you so. I said this at least two weeks ago. At least two weeks ago, I said this is going to get bad. It is going to get bad. I saw all the signs, and I still had people up to last week saying that, no, this is just the flu. It's not just the flu. If I hear that one, if I hear that one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. But I don't think, <clears throat> I don't think that I will be hearing that from anybody anymore. I think the evidence has increasingly mounted that this is not just the flu. That being said, this article by the New York Times, pretty well written. Pretty well written. As uh, those of you who are regular viewers uh, are, would know, one of my favorite pastimes is slamming the New York Times. But this article is fairly well written. It is mostly addressing the same concerns that I have in that how far is too far with the coronavirus. You know, there's that uh, famous saying by uh, Benjamin Franklin that any nation that would give up a little liberty to gain a little security would deserve neither and lose them both. So there's a delicate balancing act and we definitely don't want to slip into totalitarianism because of our fear of this uh, particular virus. It's definitely something to watch out for. At the same time, we have to take all practical measures that we can. So there's two specific uh, points in this article which I want to address. Uh, and they are this. Their questions about the current approach are distinct from those raised by some conservative activists who have suggested the virus is a politically inspired hoax or no worse than the flu. This is, this is where, this is typical New York Times, typical. 90% of the article is good with 10% garbage. So, like, this is not a conservative activist who are saying that it's a politically inspired hoax. No stupid people are saying that. <laughs> it's not conservatives or liberals or any political affiliation. It is stupid people who are currently saying that. So it, it's just, why include that? It, it has nothing to do with the rest of the article. So that's just an aside for me. More importantly, I wanted to talk about this. It is that... <clears throat> Here we go. At the same time, we have to think about equity and the way the risks and benefits of measures we take are distributed. What? What? What is with the socialist language in this article? I don't, I don't understand this particular point. We have to give due serious to this disease breaking out across the globe, said Nicholas Evans. At the same time, we have to think about equity and the way the benefits, the risks and benefits of measures we take are distributed. And I bring that up to say this. I bring that up to say this. I have already been seeing calls from the socialist Twitter that we need emergency socialism for this particular crisis, which is what I, I go back to what I said earlier. We have to be very careful that we don't cross the line into totalitarianism. 
that we we cannot compromise our principles at the same time we need to do everything we can I do think we do need to do this social distancing this was the main point of the article is, is this social distancing worth it should we be doing it uh, I think we have to I think it's necessary I mean mortality rates at 3% some say it may get as high as 7 but right now it's at 3% so I mean we have to do it we have to do what we can the good news is that in countries like China and South Korea it has uh, the number of cases has flattened it has not continued to grow exponentially so that is the that is the good news the bad news is that it's just starting to hit the West and it is going to hit Africa South Asia and South America it's going to go there there's no stopping it so it is good that we've seen this curtailed a little bit but not so much that it hasn't hit major population centers yet it's hit China this is the biggest population center and as far as I know they got about 90,000 infected and a couple thousand death on on top of that so it's gonna this is not it hasn't bottomed out yet for the United States it's gonna get worse it's not gonna get a lot worse I just heard very recently that tomorrow in Chicago they're gonna be shutting down the restaurants other than takeout and delivery they'll be shutting down restaurants I hope you I hope you all prepared I hope you got I hope you got food and I hope you got water moving on because I believe that I beat that horse to death the stock market I don't usually care about what the stock market is doing but I found this particularly interesting this is from Wikipedia not the world's greatest source but pretty good for just simple data points the largest percent change ever in the history of the stock market was in 1987 actually called Black Monday 22% drop the second largest drop was today March 16 2020 12.93% the Great Depression was 12.82 percent drop you had Black Thursday they shut the market down on Friday when the, it opened back up on Monday 12.82 percent drop now in 1929 just before the greatest economic downturn in the history of the entire world other than perhaps the fall of the Roman Empire <laughs> um, and now we we just beat it we just beat that and that's a percent change that's not a point change if you look at the total point change the top two days are today and the 12th of March 2020 people are panicking I shouldn't say people the stock market the stock market gurus are panicking and I'm not entirely sure why this is going to get bad this is not going to be as bad as the Great Depression I don't know what people are thinking this is kind of mass hysteria at this point and uh, unfortunately I'm contributing to it it is mass it's mass hysteria the toilet paper thing is insane to me if you're concerned about the coronavirus who cares about stinking toilet paper who cares buy food buy water if you're concerned about the coronavirus all right I, I, it's crazy I've seen people get in fights fight literally literal fights I had one person tell me today that he went to five different stores no toilet paper it's mass hysteria like people think toilet paper is not necessary for you to live I can tell you that right now unequivocally you will be fine go out and buy food if you're worried about this anyway I'll leave it there main takeaway 
uh, I don't think we're overreacting to the coronavirus, but we're getting close to overreacting. We're very, very near to overreacting. And sometimes an overreaction can be good, but if we go too far, we may end up conceding some of the power that the Constitution grants us unwisely. So I would keep that in mind. If you like what I do, please be sure to subscribe to me here on YouTube, follow me on Twitter and Minds, and like this video. Have a good evening. Thank you all for listening. This is Mike, the American Analyst. Follow me on Twitter, Minds, and subscribe to me on YouTube, and be sure to hit that bell notification. I'll be coming out with new videos every single day for your viewing and enjoyment. Have a good one.